want to say that um, my workshop is very much about me sharing, um, hopefully inspiring you, and then there will be, as you can see, some interactive time. I'm hoping that there may be some time at least for a, a small discussion, or at least small group discussions. Um, and during this, this workshop, can you guys all see that, or should we turn off maybe one of the lights? Yeah, yeah. yeah I think that might be better. Yeah, see if that would work. Perfect. Can you guys see that better? Yeah? Okay, excellent. Awesome. And like um, uh, like it was shared, I am not shy, so... <laughs> <laughs> but I also, it's strategy, and I want you guys to pay attention to what I do. Okay, it, but it's, I am all about helping you maximize your visibility so that you can really get your impacts out there call in your I call them soulmate clients right the people who are going to really <laughs> resonate with you and monetize on your calling and so social media is powerful right and so I do want to encourage you guys to um, share you can find me on Instagram bold sexy warrior and on Facebook it's Rosalind fun coaching bold sexy warrior is my professional page feel free to add me as your Facebook friend I would love that um, all right, so let's get started. So t welcome to learning how to be a bold, courageous leader. So, 2009 June, I thought I had it all. Here I am standing on stage with my perfect fitness model physique in this bodybuilding competition. And on the outside, my life looked just as perfect. I had just become a new registered psychologist in private practice, something I had strived so long and hard for. And I had been happily married, I still am, to the same man for three years at that point in time. And I was a second degree black belt in karate and a role model to kids, teens, and adults. And so I was really confident in everything that I did. I really believed in myself to do things epically well. But behind closed doors was a totally different story. I was stuck in this cycle of binge eating and food restriction, feeling guilty, then beating myself up, and then taking myself to over-exercise at the gym. And I could see nothing, but I was in total tunnel vision. I was feeling nothing but anxiety and emptiness. And I really couldn't understand why. Have you ever felt that way where you just felt so stuck and so frustrated and you knew that there was more to life than just what you were thinking about or feeling or what was actually going on? So right now, some of you might be feeling really unclear about your soul purpose and the path to get to what you're meant to be doing. Maybe you're really busy, but are you actually putting yourself and your business first? A lot of us aren't. We're busy doing all the things that are, are not income producing in our business. Or maybe you feel like you are putting in so much hustle, 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 and you feel like the results don't match your efforts. Can anyone recognize that? Yeah, and then it leads to burnout, right? And your fear of rejection or judgment of what other people are gonna think about you is blocking you from really putting yourself out there, really birthing your idea or making your idea even bigger and brighter and more vivid. Anyone resonate with this? So today, what was that? <laughs> I'm gonna show you six ways in how we actually sabotage ourselves. And I'm gonna actually walk you through how to get out of your own ways. Yes, I know, there's six. When you see those six, you'll be like, oh, okay. So then I'm also gonna walk you through the business model, the three pillars that I walk my clients through to activate your client attractor with ease, flow, and joy. And I'm gonna show you the most important thing to master when it comes to 
business success. This requires you to play bigger, right? It's like we all have this comfort zone and we keep feeling these nudges. And you know what, the nudges to, to do something different. For me, when I was in tunnel vision, I was feeling anxiety, I was feeling emptiness. Those are nudges. When you're feeling burnt out, when you're feeling defeated, these are nudges that there is something more. There's some, a quote or a saying, there's a breakdown to the breakthrough, right? And so let this, allow this to be the breakdown. When you feel this way, it's like, okay, what is, what is it that's meant for me right now? There's something bigger and it's calling me to step outside of my comfort zone. Let me ask you, what does it mean to you and there's no right or wrong answers, by the way, to be a bold, courageous leader. I'd love to hear from some brave souls. Yes, Tatiana. To share power. To share power, beautiful. I wanna share with you the way of a bold, sexy warrior, and as many of these answers here, right, it's about being courageous, being authentic, being confident. Saint integrity is so important. When you are in this, um, in this field of entrepreneurship, we sometimes are paving our own way. So it is really important, what was said back there, is to stay in alignment of your values. I really also believe it's about disciplining yourself. And I, I, those of you who have taken martial arts, you know what that means. Is like that inner discipline is, is formed. And really standing in your own power, being intuitive. I know some of you may, may be like, well, how do I be intuitive? So, so I'm gonna share with you, I'm gonna show you today, actually, how to tap into your intuitive powers. And outside of the box thinker, create deep impacts. We're here to strive for love and equality for all. It's about creating win, win, win situations. If, if you win, but someone else loses, that's not great, that's not good, that's not ideal. Right? We want to create win-win-win. Mm -hmm. Here are just some examples of who I see as bold, sexy warriors. We all are likely familiar with these, these uh, beautiful souls. And as you can see, no one of them are alike and they have different purposes. Right? So, um, is everyone familiar with all yes. of these? Mm -hmm. Yes. Right? Powerful. Powerful, powerful people. No. No? Okay. <laughs> let's, let's pretend we're in like kindergarten. <laughs> Who's this? La la la. La, la la. Okay. Yes, and what is her impact? Education, Education for women, girls, girls and women. Yes. I think we all know who he is. Yes. Marianne Williamson. Who are you not to be? That quote? She is, she's running for politics too. She is a spiritual teacher who wrote, who wrote uh, I don't know if she wrote it, but she teaches A Course of Miracles. Yeah, she wrote it. Yeah, she wrote it. Okay. It's powerful for her being politics. Uh, Simon Sinek, I have a little bit of a crush on him too. <laughs> Find Your Why. That is a phenomenal book. Find Your Why. Uh, Leaders Eat Last. He's, he's amazing. Watch his YouTube, um, his TED Talk. Find Your Why. Brene Brown. Woo! Woo! Dare to lead. Power of vulnerability. Hey, Madonna. She is a trailblazer. I mean, come on, look at those cone bras, right? And she is women empowerment through music, through how she dresses, how she shows up, and she really goes against the grain. And uh, Dr. Wayne Dyer, who's no longer with us here on this earth, but he is a spiritual teacher as well. I see these as bold, sexy warriors. So. You're next. You are also a bold, sexy warrior. But you know, sometimes things get in the way. The enemy. Because the enemy is not outside of us. The enemy is actually <coughs> within. And what I'm talking about is our inner critic. Right? See, these are the six ways in how our inner critic can really block us from playing bigger, from stepping outside our comfort zone. So fear of failure or success. And what if I fail? What if I succeed? Who's 
toes will I step on? You know, sometimes I work with clients who, who unconsciously don't realize they're fearful of success, but what they don't want to do is outshine somebody they love and then be hated on. I'm not ready, even though you have degrees, you've taken courses after courses, you have certifications. I'm not ready. You're not putting yourself out there. You're not putting your ideas, you're not birthing them. Or how about this one? This one was my biggest one, self-criticism. Mm -hmm. You are your biggest bully to yourself. We would never say these things to our own children or our best friends. Why are we saying it to ourselves? Do better, suck it up, right? Perfectionism goes hand in hand. I'm a recovered perfectionist, all right? Like, goes hand in hand. It's like you keep fixing, 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 and usually we're fixing things on the outside, not on the inside, right? And we never put it up there, ourselves out there, because it's not good enough. Comparison trap. And, and this is the imposter syndrome. This is you feeling like you don't measure up. This is you comparing yourself and feeling like you're not enough. And self-doubt, you constantly question the process, your, your ideas, are they good enough? Are you on the right track? And it's okay to question that, but if it's like more of a, a, an energy of anxiety, then that, that is um, an issue. So I love Wonder Woman too, just like Lisa does. This is why we're spirit animals. Well, we, are, we both we swear, are. we both <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome. Um, and honestly, I love Wonder Woman. I think she is today's modern, bold, sexy warrior. Because it's really about fighting for who you truly are. It's about standing in your power, loving yourself, owning your worth unapologetically, and getting yourself out there, getting your impacts out there. So no more wearing masks, no more do filtering. How did I get here? It wasn't easy. My, expense, my, my lessons come very expensively, whether it's through the emotional expenses or the financial expenses. So back in 2009, on that bodybuilding stage, I actually came in last place. And last place confirmed that I am not enough. So naturally, I had a breakdown after that. And I was divinely led to this therapy method I'm, I'm now certified in called Haikomi. And Haikomi means how do I stand in relationship with myself? And how do I stand in relationship with others? It's a mindfulness approach that combines neuroscience, psychology. And at this time, I was like, this thing called spirituality. And when you're learning something, you cannot not work on your own stuff, right? And what I learned was I was unconsciously operating from this place, this belief that I am valued in my doingness, my performance, my achievements, my successes, my title, rather than my beingness, who I am. And my doingness was never enough. And so what I learned to do was, I, no wonder I had become an overachiever and a perfectionist. And I had like a hardcore type A personality. I did not value rest. So I learned the art of slowing down. I learned to embrace being perfectly imperfect, let go of control, and come home to me. And this is a huge part of my work and my practice daily with myself and my clients. I was so transformed that I got certified in Hakomi and eating psychology, and I started to work with former versions of myself. And I was so inspired, I blogged my own journey. And this is not mislabeled, this is correct. This is what I would blog, and this is what I would share my posts in public, and when I went out to do talks, this is my before and after not so typical fitness journey. What you don't see here is how much more happy and truly free I am. Even though in the after picture, typically in a, in a before after picture, it would be reversed. I wanted to have people understand that we, it's what's most important is, is our happiness. 
is that we get to be who we truly are. So I really define the norms. And you know what happens when you really put yourself out there in such a brave, bold way? Oh, well, that's my journey right there. Huffington Post, one of the world's largest platforms, knocks on my door and asked me if I could publish my posts on their platform. I thought it was a joke. I was like, whatever. And then it was a real thing. I'm like, what? So then the soulgasm happened. I'm like, oh, I'm on purpose, right? I'm on purpose. This is amazing. And what happened was this led me to um, join a group coaching program for speakers to create more impacts in the world. And then I became the first psychologist in Alberta to uh, create an online program with food, body image, and self-love. And this was the first time I was really um, met with the world of coaching. I was like, what is this world? This is so different than the clinical world. And I was so inspired by my peers. This led me to then uh, my first international talk, and I landed a cover magazine cover of a fitness magazine, a women's fitness magazine. I did not diet, clearly. I do not have six-pack abs, and I have not photoshops. And I wrote a four-page article here called How to Flex Your Self-Love Muscle. And awesome that you are on a magazine cover, but you know what's the, the most amazing feeling? is the messages on social media. The women who read this magazine, who saw this magazine, started writing me, started sharing this, and started saying, you know, I hated my body. I hated it. And then I saw Roz's, and I, I realized, like, my body kind of looks like hers. <laughs> and on purpose, on purpose, I wore very little clothing because I wanted to celebrate the part of me that I hated the most, most of my life, which was my stomach. I hated my belly. Even when I was bodybuilding, I, had, I did have abs. I hated it. It was never small enough. And I, th I now love my belly, and I want to celebrate it, and I want to celebrate it in a really big, bold way. And so I want you to know this is what happens when you courageously challenge society, society and its beliefs and its norms that you go against the grain in a really authentic way and who you are and you stand up. You turn your pain into your purpose. So this was really amazing and all this impact <coughs> was happening, but, there's always a but, right? There were women reaching out to me, men as well, who wanted to work with me, but they were outside of the province I'm licensed. And I knew I could help them but I couldn't. There's a lot of red tape being a licensed therapist. Meanwhile, I'm looking over at my coaching peers and I'm seeing the, the, the location freedom they have, the time freedom, the financial freedom, the laptop lifestyle, and my heart desire to be playing at that level, to be playing bigger, to create more impact directly with people. But my inner critic kept me small. It would say things like, well, Roz, you're already making really great money. You know, you have a young family. Like, what if you start that coaching business and you fail? You're, you're responsible for these pe young little people in your family. Or things like, you're gonna demote yourself from a psychologist to just a coach? I know that ego is really big. Um, <laughs> Who's going to come see you and pay when you're not covered under benefits anymore? Okay, it's not that big. And this one was a really big one. You are going to disappoint your Asian parents. Mm. Especially your dad. So I played small. I love being a psychologist. But you know sometimes when you know you're meant to play bigger. You're meant for to do greater things and be greater. I kept feeling those nudges. Dissatisfaction, unfulfillment. It's like, there's more, there's more. And so what I did was I knew I couldn't keep going on like this. I had to tap into a different part of me so that I could create a new version of me, that next level of me. And I knew I couldn't do it alone. So I manifested, I was in a group coaching program as a client, and I, I went to work on my money mindset. 
And I manifested, this happens blindfoldedly, this is why there's no such as coincidences, synchronicities actually happen. I manifested my accountability bite and she's a seven figure award winning business coach. What? Are you kidding me? And at this point I wasn't, I was a little bit awakened, I wasn't super awakened yet. And it was just so incredible. She was there for her own work and we got to obviously know each other and I made the scariest, biggest investment I had ever made at that point in my life, not including grad school and university. But it was incredible because then I started my own coaching business and this happened three years ago. I responsibly dwindled down my practice as I built my coaching business, never thinking I was gonna retire as a psychologist, by the way. And then one day I felt the conflict. So that was the other scary stuff. Inner critic comes back in. Wow, what if you fail? And all that stuff. So I, I sat with it. I, I, I worked through it. And I thought, you know what? I'm here to be on purpose. I'm not owning my purpose. I'm not doing the world a favor if I'm playing small. And so today... I'm proud to say I'm absolutely living my dream. I am absolutely uh, love having both men and women in my Bold Sexy Warrior Tribe. I run masterminds online and live workshops in my home. I love my home. It's a very homey, sp uh, beautiful space. I love to speak in big audiences and intimate audiences such as this. I love interactive workshops. Life is abundant and uh, my big celebration besides being here today is uh, next week I'm speaking at Harvard University. Right.